Hey everybody, this is Van here. I want to uh, spend a few minutes with you and help you go through the process of forgiving people. Um, I, I've had to do that in my past uh, a few times and also um, I've, I, I just going to say probably for three decades now, I've helped uh, a lot of people go through the process of forgiveness. Now here's a couple things I want you to understand. Um, our heart, um, the thing inside of us, our, our mind, our heart and our soul can get very bitter, can get very um, angry, bitter, um, very vengeful. Um, I, I think I'm preaching to the choir here when I say that. Um, so I want to help you get rid of bitterness, get rid of anger. Um, I'm going to go through some scripture here in Matthew 18, if you're interested in, in turning there and, and checking it out. But um, Jesus teaches this. This is red letter stuff. So this is good stuff. Not that the other part of the Bible isn't any more important, but um, this is Jesus himself. Um, and it's such an important part of the theology that we walk in when it comes to forgiveness, because um, I've been a Christian for about almost 37 years now, and I've known so many Christians that are so bound up, that are so bitter, that are so mad, that are so unforgiving, their life is just chaos because they have not went through the process of forgiving others that have hurt them. And I, I get, um, um, I, I, I've had some stuff I had to forgive when I became a Christian. Um, and, and I've worked with people who have gone through some terrible, terrible, terrible abuses. And if you're hearing this, I'm sure you're going, yes, I, I've gone through some heavy stuff. Um, I just posted a video a few days ago with um, Nancy and Ben from our Colville Church plant, and um, they've gone through some heavy stuff. Um, so to be honest with you, I've, uh, I've, I've walked with a lot of people who've gone through some stuff. You, you name the abuse, whether it's sexual abuse, physical abuse, spiritual abuse, um, uh, whatever abuse it is, um, it's all very severe. Um, I know we really can't compare. Uh, everybody has a different story and I'm not trying to make light of any kind of uh, trauma or bitterness at all because it's, it's very serious and people are in a lot of pain. And it's my heart to help people walk in freedom. Um, that's kind of the whole just of this channel being a uh, mountain preacher. And obviously I have a lot of little short animal videos on there because I love being in the mountains as well um, just to add some entertainment to it and, and some fun. But um, this is very serious stuff. And it's very serious because, um, again, Jesus teaches this and, and um, it blows my mind, um, the experiences I had out there with people, how angry and how bitter some people have been over stuff. And, and I get it, I, I understand it because of some of the pain I've seen people walk through as kids and teenagers and so forth. And the abuse of, there, in any abuse, I'm just saying this, whether it's severe spiritual, whether it's severe verbal, verbal abuse, like, you know, you grow up in an atmosphere where you're always teased and you, you know, people will say you'll never amount to anything and you're worthless, or whether it's physical abuse where you've been severely beat by close friends, by relatives, moms and dads, aunts and uncles, grandpas and grandmas, sexual abuse. Um, it's all very, very severe and what it does on our psyche, what it does in our heart, and what it does in our life. And um, so it's very severe. Uh, it's very important that we, we get this. So I'm gonna read some scripture here. Again, it's out of Matthew 18. And I'm gonna make some comments but the goal is that you, I want to help you walk through on how to forgive people and how to forgive yourself. I'm going to touch on that a little bit and what that means. Also, I'm going to say something in how to forgive God. Now, God hasn't done anything wrong. He's God. He's perfect. He's just. God's never done anything wrong because he's God. He's perfect. But there are a lot of people out there, and I'm assuming um, even people right now that hear my voice and if you know somebody out there that is just has hatred and bitterness and anger towards God, would you please share this video with them? Because I, I understand how people can get that way. I totally get it. Um, 
life hasn't gone their way or why did God allow this abuse in my life? I mean, we have all these thoughts of, of why God, why did this happen to us and, and how come you let this happen to my family member or us or whatever it might be. So I understand the bitterness and the anger, uh, but I wanna help you walk through that and um, what that really means to do. Um, Matthew 18, I'm gonna start in verse 21. <clears throat> and Peter, who's <laughs> always the one asking Jesus a lot of questions and a lot of good questions, Peter came to him and said, um, and he asked the Lord Jesus, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? And Peter says, seven times, is that enough? After seven, I'm done. We'll just do away with that person. And then Jesus comes up with this answer that I'm sure blew him away and really made the disciples at that time think, oh my goodness, what are we getting ourselves into? Um, Jesus says this, no, nope, not seven times. Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Um, that's a little bit more than seven. So what did Jesus mean by this? Well, I was you know, the analogy, and, and there's some um, tongue-in-cheek in here that Jesus was saying, not to be funny, but he was making a point, and I'm going to read here and just go through some points. So if you're in bitterness and anger toward people that have hurt you, maybe it's current, maybe it's in the past, maybe you've been severely, uh, severely abused, abused, traumatized, whatever it might be, um, this is for all of us. This isn't for just a select few. This is for anybody that wants to be a disciple of Jesus, that walks with Jesus, that wants to get rid of bitterness in their life. You know, bitterness or anger or rage toward people, um, we, we get messed up up here when we think, because we have an enemy, and this enemy loves to twist things and loves to twist our mind and put thoughts in there and say things that aren't scriptural and and he, it's, that's what he does. He's a liar. He's a father of lies. Even when Jesus was in the desert and fasted for 40 days, um, uh, Satan came to him and, and quoted scripture, but he didn't quote it correctly. And that's what he does to us. He quotes scripture maybe halfway or a quarter way or whatever it might be, and he twists it and he twists our mind, our thinking process. So if you're in that and you have this anger and bitterness toward people that you just want to see die. I mean, I've, I've been around people that said, I, I want them to die. I hate them so much. I want them to burn in hell because they're, they're such evil people. And I will say this, any abuse against you um, or things that you've seen toward loved ones or whatever, uh, any abuse is evil. There's no question about it. I don't care if it's spiritual, where we use the Bible or we used religion to, to lord over people, to control people, that's evil. If we, um, any kind of physical, sexual, uh, verbal abuse, whatever it is, it, it's all evil. There's nothing good about it. It's just, it's flat out evil. And Jesus says this in verse 23 in, in Matthew 18. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with his servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors who was brought in who owed him millions of dollars, he couldn't pay. So his master ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned so he could pay the debt. Now this is an analogy, this is a figure of speech that Jesus is using, but he's comparing this scenario to the kingdom of God. So what is Jesus saying here? Well, first of all, the king in this story represents God. And the, the person who comes to him that owes him this debt that is impossible to repay, is us. It's, 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 it's the sinners of the world. It's everybody. It's not just a select few sinners. It's all of us. And, um, and we come to God and, 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 and we just say we can't repay it. You know, he, we, we, it's time to pay up and, and we just say we just can't do it. So the person who owes the debt is us. And there's nothing that we can do about it in the sense of, and I'll get to some more points here in a minute, you cannot repay God. You can't, you can't do enough good works. You can't even think good enough works. You can't do anything to pay for our debt, which is our sin, our separation from God. It's impossible. It is literally impossible for us to repay 
or connect with God in any way that would give us a relationship with God because we've been separated from him because of sin. That's the debt that's impossible to repay. And we're all in that boat, no matter who we are. And it goes on in verse 26. It says, but the man fell down before his master and begged him, please be patient with me and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him and he released him and forgave him his debt. Now, that part of the story, what does that mean? That's our salvation. That means wherever that, I was 19 when this happened. I was so convicted of my sin, who I was as a person, where I was going as a person. The Holy Spirit was convicted me. God showed up in my dorm room in, in when I was 19 years old in, in Eastern Washington University. And I got on my knees. I repented. I said, Lord, please forgive me. And it was an instantaneous uh, salvation in the sense the Holy Spirit came into my life. I've never been the same since then. That was in 1987. That's been a few years ago. This is our salvation. We come, we're convicted of who we are. We come before the Lord. We say, Lord, we're sorry. We're sorry. Um, have mercy on me. And we're saved by what? God's grace. Uh, the Bible is very clear that we don't do anything to get saved. The only thing that we do is receive his salvation, which is by his grace, by his love, by his mercy, by his forgiveness. God saves us. He does all the work. He convicts us. What happened on the cross of Jesus Christ, the, the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension, all that is our salvation. And all we do is receive that. And we're born again. We make Jesus Christ our Lord. So what are some points on this section of the story? This represents our salvation when we recognize our sinfulness and separation from God. We come to him and repent and are saved by God's amazing grace. And that is our salvation. It is all God's amazing grace. God reached out to us. God convicted us. And, and you have to catch this. The conviction of the Holy Spirit that convicts us of our sin, that's God's goodness. That is his grace. That is his mercy reaching out to us saying, Van, come on, I've been, I've been convicting you for years. It's time. Today's the day. That is God's grace. And we are filled with the Spirit of God, and we become a disciple of Jesus. Now, salvation is simple in the sense of how to explain it. We become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Um, in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, uh, the Holy Spirit was in a box. God was in a box in the sense, um, and, and the, the priest went in there once a year to... to take care of sins of all the people and, and so forth. It was a ritualistic thing. But the new covenant is completely different, completely better, way better. And the old covenant has been deleted or it's obsolete according to Jesus, according to the New Testament. And the temple of the Holy Spirit now is us. When as individuals who receive, we repent, we receive Christ, we become filled with the Holy Spirit. That's, that's our salvation. That's the mark of salvation. We get God in our life. So a true Christian, one who is truly born again, has a spirit, is going to want to change and transform their life through the power of God, the power of his word in their life. That's just what a true Christian is. And it's a process. It's a lifelong thing that we go through. Um, another one, a point out of this section is that it's a supernatural act able to be performed by God because of the cross of Jesus Christ. In other words, he forgave us of all of our sin. And I'm going to get to a point here in a minute that's really important because some people get so hung up on, how do I forgive myself? Man, I, I did the worst of the worst of the worst sin. I murdered somebody. I, I did this or I, whatever it is, we think that we have this sin that's too big to forgive. And I'll get to that in a minute. Um, a lot of people are very hung up on that. How do I forgive myself? So I'm going to go keep going here. And verse 28 says this, But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. <laughs> okay, this is us. This isn't the special sinner out there. This is us. Um, we get saved. We get forgiven of all of our sin clean slate we've been made right or righteous before the father because of what jesus christ has done not because of what we do we have all this forgiveness of sin we have eternal um, 
uh, life with Jesus Christ, and then we turn around and we find somebody who has sinned against us, and we want to choke them out. We don't want to forgive them. We want vengeance on them. The thing I want to point, I want to make here that's really clear, and I've had to do this many times, and I'm just going to be blunt and be honest. Look in the mirror and ask yourself if you're perfect. Look in the mirror and ask yourself, are you sinless? And have you been perfectly right all your life? And have you never harmed anybody? Well, the obvious answer is no. We're all sinners. We're all saved by grace, okay? So I just want to make that point very clear. So the man who was forgiven the debt couldn't, that could never be repaid decided not to forgive the other person who owed him a small amount. Now, we owed God a debt that could never be, no matter how much money, we could own all the money in the world and it would not pay for our debt for salvation. That's how big the debt is that we owed God. But Jesus paid our debt. That's the grace of God. That's the love of God. That's the forgiveness of God. That's the kindness of God. That is the grace of God and how amazing and how much he loves us. That is amazing. Then we get somebody, after we get saved, and we find somebody that has hurt us. And I get the pain is unbearable sometimes with some of the people I've, I've walked through some stuff. The, the stories that I've heard that have happened to little girls and happened to little boys is from the pit of hell. It is nasty. It is unbearable. It is evil. It, it, it's grotesque at the worst way. So I understand the pain. I understand all that stuff um, because I've seen it. I've walked with it. I've, I've been a part of it. And um, so I get that. But the thing that Jesus is making here is that I've forgiven you for a debt that can never be repaid. Now you have to forgive your debtors, the people who have sinned against you. Why is that? Well, there's a Huge, a huge point is going to be made here. So the, first, the the fellow servant fell down who only owed this guy, you know, a couple thousand bucks. Before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it back, he repleted, but his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be replayed. So basically, we're forgiven of a debt we can't repay. We go to somebody who hurt us 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever it is, and we pretty much put them in prison and we lock them up and say, you're done with. I'm taking vengeance out on you, which is not our job. It's God's job. And it's very difficult, but I just want to encourage you. What we're doing here is we're releasing people to God so God could have vengeance his way because we are not good at vengeance and we are not good at judging people because we are not judges. We are incomplete in that area. There's only one true judge and that is Jesus Christ. That's why we hand it over to him. Here's a couple more points from this scripture. <clears throat> what gets in the way of us not being able to forgive after we've been forgiven so much. Here are some things that come up within us after we we serve God and we follow God and all this kind of stuff. There's bitterness, there's anger, there's hatred, there's hurt, there's pain, there's trauma, there's shame, there's condemnation, there's feeling of worthlessness. How many of you out there right now have just been told all your life you're worthless, you'll never amount to anything? I'm I'm telling you right now as a as a pastor, and I don't brag about the title or anything. I don't even like the title, but I'm telling you what People who have been verbally abused like that are just as bad off as anybody that's been physically or sexually abused because their mind is so messed up and their heart is so broken that the people that they thought were supposed to love them just spoke evil things over their life. And if that's you, I'm going to help you walk through forgiveness here. So um, feelings of worthlessness and vengeance toward one another who hurt us. We want vengeance and we want it now. And I understand that, but God is the only one that has vengeance on that. So when we're saved by God's amazing grace, we have to look at these things and realize that God has forgiven us all of our sins and made us right before him. A few minutes ago, I said, look in the mirror and ask yourself if you're perfect. 
And I want you to think about this. And this is this is what I this is the conversation I have with people when we're walking through forgiveness. Let's just say if you're hearing this right now, a dad or a mom or a, an uncle, someone really close to you hurts you physically or sexually or verbally, whatever it is. And it was a process and it was it was a very severe thing. Let me ask you this. Do you think God wants to save them? If they're still alive, do you think God wants to pour out his grace and mercy on them as well to save them? Because according to the Bible, the cross of Jesus Christ, God wants to forgive the sins of the whole world. He wants, God desires that all people, men and women, come to him and get saved. That's the desire of God. So God's desire is everybody gets saved. But when we think, wait a minute, the person who hurt us, I want them in hell. I don't want them to get saved. But then we got to think, wait a minute, God saved me. And I wasn't a very good person either. Those are the processes I want you to think about and ask the Holy Spirit to help you process through that thing. Because once we start thinking about, wait a minute, God saved me, and I'm not a good person at all. I, I, I was terrible. I was against God. I was against his ways. I was rebellious. I was prideful. I, I sinned every sin to the book. I was a rank sinner just like all of mankind. So think about that when you start trying to act out vengeance on people and anger and bitterness. Think about God's heart toward them, even though they've done evil things, just like we've done evil things. So I'm going to keep reading here in verse 31. It says, when some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. And the king called the man in and had uh, that he had forgiven and said, you evil servant. So <laughs> This person has been forgiven, been saved by God's grace, who would not forgive someone who owed him just a little bit. Now God's calling him evil because he will not forgive. That's that's a pretty, that's, that's, those, are, those are Jesus' words. So I need to bring those into my heart and go, Lord, are you speaking to me? Then the king called the man in who had forgiven, you evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you. Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid the entire debt. This is the crux of the whole story here. This is hard. When I explain this to people, I've had people get really mad at me, walk away, come back a few days later and say, okay, I get it now. So this is going to be difficult, but I, this is, you have to, this is, these are the words of Jesus. He, he taught this. Jesus hung on the cross for us, so he, he had the right to teach this. He's God. Um, our sin against God is impossible to pay. In other words, it'd be like you owe God $40 trillion. You can't repay it. It's impossible. The sin against us is nowhere near the same compared to our sin against God. Now, I want you to think about this because it's that's very difficult to understand because you're going, wait a minute, I've been abused, I've been hurt, I've been tortured, I've been all this stuff. You're telling me that the sins against me that were committed against me, that were that hurt me, that traumatized me, that broke me, those sins don't compare to our sin against God. And I'm saying that's exactly what Jesus is saying. Our sin against God is a holy God. He's perfect. He's just. We have sinned against him and it's impossible to pay that sin. That's why when you look at the cross of Jesus Christ, it is the most powerful. It is the most gracious. It is the most loving. It is the most, it's the most amazing thing in the history of anything ever because God himself his son Jesus Christ hung on a cross and forgave me and you of all of our sin he died he rose from the dead and he ascended on high and your sin and my sin has been made clean that's amazing grace. So when people have sinned against us, Jesus is saying, forgive them. 
Okay, that's a tough one. But I'm telling you what, it's a supernatural act of God. Just like God supernaturally forgave us because what happened on the cross, we need to ask him, now, Lord, I need you to help me. Give me your grace and your strength to forgive. And he will do that. He will absolutely do that. Matter of fact, he's going to work a miracle in your life because when you learn to forgive the person who hurt you and get rid of that bitterness and that anger and that thing that's tearing you up inside, you're going to be set free. And all of a sudden, because of the amazing grace and the supernatural act that God does in your life, you're going to start feeling sorry for that person who brutally hurt you. Why are you going to do that? Because you're going to see with your spirit, with your mind, with your soul, how big your sin was against God and it was forgiven. And the sin against you is nowhere near the sin that you sinned against God or that I've sinned against God. Right out of the chute, it's like, you're crazy. I can never do that. But I'm telling you what, right now, Holy Spirit will help you and help you right away. He will help you understand exactly that our sin is bigger, way bigger against God than sin against us and that you're going to be able to forgive. Why is it so important to forgive? Well, I read a list of stuff earlier. I'm going to read it again here in a minute. I'm just going to have a couple points of this last one. So when we refuse to um, forgive, God calls us evil. Thank you, Jesus. That's, that's nice of you. But um, think about that whole thing. We're forgiven, but yet I'm not forgiving you. It's not a good place to be. But God will give you the grace and help you through that. Next point, God says we must have mercy on those who hurt, traumatized, abused, and sinned against us. And it's not optional. Now, well, it is optional if you want to get free and live in peace and joy and rest and love and kindness and joy and all those things. But if you want to live in bitterness and hatred and, and have your inside tore up and you want to be a control freak, you want to be a manipulator, you want to pr always protecting yourself because people hurt you and you're just in misery, you're confused all the time, you have a choice to do that. Um, I'm encouraging you to say, you know what, I'm not going to live that way anymore. I want to live in freedom. I don't want to hate people and be uh, want to take vengeance out on people. Um, so he was sent to prison to be tortured and completely paid until he completely paid his debt. I'm going to go back up and read um, <clears throat> a list of things of what does it mean to be tortured. Um, what, um, what are the things that the enemy tortures us with? And, and think about this. Jesus said, if you don't forgive the person who hurt you, you're going to be in prison and you're going to be tortured. Well, what is the prison? You don't literally go to a prison. The prison is your life. The prison is inside of you. The, the, um, let me just run through this list again. Bitterness. How much do you like bitterness? You, you like living in bitterness where it's just like crazy bitterness all the time and you, you just have hate and anger and hurt and pain and trauma and shame and condemnation feeling worthless and you have vengeance and, and towards others and that have hurt you. And then um, we have other things that the, the enemy is able to torture us with. Now, <clears throat> let, let me just say it this way. God says, if you don't forgive, you're gonna go to prison and be tortured. Um, and it's a legal right for the enemy to torture us. So I hope this is revelation for you. Um, what are some other things that we're tortured with? Well, look at our society. Look how messed up people are in our society. Again, there's there's bitterness, there's hatred. The, the enemy could come in and, and give you more jealousy, more envy. How about confusion? How many people out there, Christians who love God, are just so confused, they don't know what direction to go. They, they have, they're clueless about life because they're so confused, they refuse to forgive. What about um, taunting voices? What about accusing voices? Um, the enemy comes in, and right when you think that you might have conquered one voice, there's 13 other voices coming in, and the voices of condemnation and shame and guilt and, and all this stuff. If we don't forgive, the enemy has a right to do all those things to us because Jesus gave him that right. Because we are playing God when we say, God, I want you to forgive me, 
but I do not want to forgive the people who hurt us. So forgiveness, I hope you're catching this, forgiveness will transform your life. It will get rid of all bitterness, anger out of your life. It will teach you to love people. You have actually have an opportunity to love people like Jesus loved you. What are some other things? These are all common things in our society. How about anxiety attacks? Like all the time, oppression, just heaviness. You're just always oppressed. What about depression? Um, what about being control issues? You, you've learned to protect yourself and you just have to control every situation. And if you're not in control, you panic, you, you get anxious, you're, you just kind of go crazy and you get confused because you can't control it. So you back way off, you don't be around people and, and you just, you're just going insane sometimes. What about um, that we might become manipulators and drive people away, or when we control people, we drive people away? Um, if you are this, I'm just telling you what right now, that God has grace and he loves you, and he wants to take that bitterness right out of you, and he wants to teach you to quit being in control because he's in control, because he loves you, and God wants you to walk in freedom. He wants you to walk in peace and joy. He wants you to be able to rest and not be anxious and just always thinking all the time and, and manipulating and just always in pain in your mind and your heart. Because all those things cause physical issues too. It's a proven fact in, our, in science that the more spiritual issues that we have going on in our life cause a lot of physical issues as well. And I'm just going to say this, um, it's, it's a fact, I've seen it hundreds of times over the years. People, whether it's men and women, forgive and um, forgive from the heart. They have many physical issues that they had begin to disappear because the, the, the whole, our hearts and our minds being bound up and just so tight and anxious and, and, and worrying and all the things that the enemy can torture us with, when those things are released, physical our physical bodies just also get released and get rid of some of the stuff that's there that doesn't mean you're going to get rid of everything but i'm just saying i've seen hundreds of times where people got healed of all sorts of different physical ailments because they learned to forgive here's another one there will be times when you think you are getting better and then the enemy blasts you with everything on the list that i just read to you because he has a right to do that that is difficult that's um, that that brings people down to serious depression sometimes maybe even suicidal thoughts obviously it's very common because what we do is we try to control we try to say god i'm not going to forgive this person so what what is that like here's what it's like it's like you take a pill that's poison you take it and you eat it thinking that it's going to hurt the person that hurt you. And all it's doing is what? It's killing you from the inside. So don't take the poison peel, pill, get rid of it, and learn to forgive, which I'll help you in a minute. And I guarantee you the, the, the hatred, the bitterness, the vengeance, and all the things that just drive you insane and drive you crazy can be completely disappear. What about forgiving... So anyway, that, that's really quick on forgiving others. Um, I don't have the book with me. Um, write this down. Neil Anderson has a series called Freedom in Christ. There's a lot of other writers out there that have similar stuff, and it's all good. Um, well, I don't know if it's all good, but a lot of it's really good. I just use his stuff. Neil Anderson, um, I use a book called Restored that he wrote. His Freedom in Christ manual is the same basic uh, freedom, steps of freedom. So either one is fine. Amazon, you just go buy a restored on Amazon or freedom in Christ manual. You can go through the steps, but what you do is you just write down a list of people that you just know you need to forgive right away. You'll probably have several that are just obvious that you've hated all your life. And then what I'm going to encourage you to do, first of all, I'm going to encourage you to get one of those books, restored book. It's called restored or freedom in Christ from Neil Anderson. That way you could look at the steps and it just makes it a lot easier for you. But you write down the people that you need to forgive. And then you just go one by one. It's good if you could do it with a brother or sister in Christ and help you through it. If you want to email me on this, I'd be more than happy to help you through it. But it's important also to go back to the situation where you were hurt, whatever that situation was, and recognize, yes, they hurt me. 
they abused me, they did whatever they did. And then you tell yourself, you write down, just write it down, how did it make you feel? Did it make you feel worthless? Um, you couldn't protect yourself, you felt vulnerable, you felt violated, whatever you felt, write that down and just get that out of your mouth and confess that and then you forgive that person. Now, that's really difficult. It's very difficult, but I'm gonna tell you, here's the supernatural act that a lot of people won't tell you and even some counselors won't even help you out in this area. Some will, some won't. Don't think of all the bad things that happened to you and, and bring those up and bring them up in your mind and bring them up in your mind until you can get to this point where you might forgive. Here's the commandment from the Lord. You forgive that person. You express how it made you feel when the time that you were hurt. You get all of that out. It, it, you might be crying. You might be bawling. You might be throwing up. You might be spitting because there's so much pain and anger in there. It's all right just to get it out. Then you forgive that person because here's the, here's the reason that you forgive them. As soon as you forgive them, God acts. The reason is, is because you are obeying God. And as soon as you obey the Lord, Jesus Christ, he instantly acts in your behalf. He gives you the power to forgive. And day by day, you're forgiving. And then pretty soon, after a few days, that person, if they're still alive, you actually begin to pray for them and say, Lord, man, I hated them so bad. They hurt me so bad. But I see now that you want them saved just as much as you want me saved, even though they've done evil things in their life. And, I be and you begin to pray for them. I'm telling you what, it's supernatural. Only God can do this. And your life will be so radically changed. You'll be blown away on the goodness of God. And you will get rid of bitterness. You will get rid of vengeance. You will get rid of anger. You'll be able to release this stuff out of your life. It's just that poison of bitterness. And that's what God wants because God forgave us. So what does it mean to forgive ourselves? That's a big one. I've walked with many people. They, they, they say, oh, I, you know, I received my Jesus, my Savior. He, did, he forgave all my sins on the cross except two. I'm going, what do you mean two? Or what do you, uh, all those sins but one. I go, what do you mean one? And, um, well, I did something when I was, you know, 20. I did something when I was 25. I did something when I was 10. I just cannot forgive myself for that. Please hear me. It's not about you forgiving yourself. It's about you receiving forgiveness from our Lord Jesus Christ. If you, you could think of the worst possible sin that you could ever commit when you're 10, you're 15, you're 20, doesn't matter the age, it's forgiven. Jesus Christ hung on the cross, he bled to death, and all your sins are forgiven. Even the one or the two that you think is impossible to forgive is completely and totally thrown into the depth of the sea and forgotten about because of the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, if that's revelation to you, I hope it is. I will say this, and I, I've walked with people. I eventually have to tell them that if you cannot get over a sin that you've committed or something that you did to think is too bad, I'm telling you this right now, you're playing God. What you're saying is, Jesus, your cross was amazing, but it wasn't quite amazing enough to forgive me of this sin. That's not a good place to be in. You're telling God that he needs help to forgive you of your sin. And I'm telling you, that's one of the, the tortures of the enemy. It's one of the lies of the enemy. All your sins are forgiven, no matter what you've done, no matter how evil it was, it's forgiven. That's what it means to forgive yourself. You receive all the forgiveness of God and you don't worry about forgiving yourself because you're forgiven. And what does it mean to forgive God? A lot of people are very bitter at God, and maybe some of you are. If you know somebody, please share this with them. I understand why people are bitter at God, because in their mind, they're thinking, God, why did you allow this to happen to my kid? Or why did you allow this to happen to me when I was a kid? Again, I get it. 
we get angry at God, we're angry at people, we're angry at ourselves. The enemy loves when we are angry. So what does it mean to forgive God? Well, we don't forgive God because God never sinned. There, there's nothing to forgive God for, but it's all right to help someone process through the thinking that I'm mad at God because he allowed this to happen, so I'm angry. Well, that's true. You could say that he allowed it to happen, but we do live in a very broken, sinful world, so a lot of evil things happen every day. So what it does, it gives you a chance to be like God and that he loved us. The Bible says when we were enemies with God, he forgave us. That's pretty heavy. When we were enemies with God, he forgave us. So God encourages us to pray for and what? Forgive our enemies that have hurt us. So I hope this has helped you. This is not everything that can be said about forgiveness. This is just a, a snippet. But um, if you want to get rid of bitterness, if you want to walk in rest, in peace, in joy. Now, remember, happiness is a choice. Happiness isn't part of the, the, the um, kingdom of God in the sense that it's something that's in us. Peace and joy is the kingdom of God rest. Jesus said, if you come to me, that if you're broken, you're burdened down, you're oppressed, depressed, anxious, you have heavy burdens, you give those to me and I will give you rest. That means we get to live in God's rest, his joy, his peace. Jesus is the prince of peace. God completely says, you could live in my peace. You could live in my joy if you release bitterness. Again, I just want to say this before I sign off here. It's called the Restored Book or Freedom in Christ Book by Neil Anderson. There are other ones out there. This is the one I use. I've just used it for years. I really like it. It's Steps to Freedom, and they just will help you go down. If you want to email me, I could give you the book name again or whatever. But please... If you want to get rid of bitterness and you want a clean heart, you want a heart that is full of joy and peace, it's time to forgive. So I'm going to pray. Father, I just pray right now, whoever hears my voice right now, that you pour out your grace, you pour out your mercy, you pour out your, your love, your kindness. Lord, your whole character, you pour it out upon them and you give them the strength to forgive. You, you give them the strength to pray for those who have hurt them, Lord God. So, Lord, I just thank you for your love, your patience with all of us, Lord God. I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you just uh, pour out your spirit on all that hear my voice and help them forgive so they can walk in peace and joy in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Be blessed. Appreciate it.